Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Odroid HC4. Now this is kind of an odd one. It is a single board computer when it comes down to it, but it does have some pretty awesome features built in. As you can see here, they do come with their own case. It's got a heatsink, it's got a fan built in. They actually offer two models, one with an OLED on the front, and one without. Now I think it's pretty cool with the OLED, but in my opinion, it is a bit of a gimmick. Yes, at a glance, when it's set up correctly, you can get some information on the unit running and things like that. But if you're looking to save a little money, I would go with the one without the OLED. Now personally, when I'm running something like this, it's not kind of a showpiece or anything like that. We have this clear plastic, which actually I think looks pretty cool. But once I have something like this up and running, it's usually out of the way and I, I don't go over to look at that OLED display. So you might have noticed the two slots on the top here, and this was actually released by Odroid as their new home cloud platform, but there's tons of other stuff that we can do with it if you're not into a home cloud setup. Now personally, I've just tested two one terabyte, 3.5 inch drives, and some SSDs in this unit, but they claim it supports up to two 12 terabyte drives, so you could use this as a home cloud platform, you could use this as a server, if you even want to get into retro gaming, we do have a lot of operating systems available. Because after all, this is actually based on the Odroid C4. So we have the same specs, except we have room for two SATA drives. Now, when this was initially launched, I was under the impression that these SATA drives would be running over a USB 3.0 bus. But luckily, it's running over a more native PCIe bus, so it's way more reliable and much faster. I was getting over 100 megabytes per second moving large files from my Windows machine over to this unit, to that external 1 terabyte Western Digital. So let's go ahead and take a look at the internals. I've just pulled the top shell off. This is the version without the OLED. As you can see, it's very reminiscent of a single board computer because after all, it's basically just an ARM-based SBC like the Odroid C4. So taking a look around back here, we have our power input, 15 volts, 4 amps, Micro SD card slot, single USB 2.0 port, full size HDMI, and gigabit Ethernet. Taking a closer look, as you can see, we have those two SATA ports. We also have UART, our five GPIO pins for connecting an OLED display. This one here is the version without it. And we also have an IR receiver. Flipping this thing over, choosing the same heatsink as the Odroid C4. We also have our fan connector, and there's a reset button. So when it comes to external I.O., it really doesn't have a lot going for it. I was hoping there was at least one USB 3.0 port on this unit. But instead of focusing on external I.O., they've added that PCIe bridge to these two SATA connectors. So we do have room for a lot of storage, and this can be turned into many different things. In-home cloud storage, using something like Open Media Vault, you can set this up as a media server using Plex or even CoreLec. It can function as a retro gaming device, and when it comes down to it, this could actually be used as a small desktop PC, because it does support Ubuntu Mate. But you could always run this headless, and I think that's what most people will do with something like this. Now, as for RAM and the SoC they're using here, we have 4GB of LPDDR4 RAM, and it's using the S905X3 CPU, just like the Odroid C4. I mean, this is laid out exactly like that board, but instead of having external USB 3.0 ports, all that's piped into the SATA connectors to keep that speed up on our external hard drives. Or in this case, I don't know if we're really going to call them external or not, but this is kind of a toaster layout, as you can see. Now this does support petite boot right out of the box, so you can boot directly from an external hard drive, and I'll be booting from an SSD. I've installed Ubuntu Mate, but they also have a version of Android available, but there's also other third-party operating systems available, like Armbian. Okay, so here we are. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of different operating systems available for the HC4. We have Armbian, there's Debian, and personally, I like having a nice user interface. I'm a big fan of Mate. And everything seems to work really well on this little chipset here. It's not perfect, it's definitely not running as good as an x86 CPU, but we're working with a low-end ARM chip here. This is the Amlogic S905X3, same thing that's in that C4. Now if you want to just set this up with, let's say, Open Media Vault, I would recommend installing ARMBN. You can do it headless if you want to. Maverick over on the Odroid forums has a pure Debian build for this, but I chose Ubuntu Mate. I'm just a big fan of it. And like I mentioned, I just like the ease of use, because the main thing that I'm going to be using this for is a Plex server. Now I've already set this up to automatically mount my 1TB drive. I've just named it HC4 1TB. And the way it's set up right now is I can connect to this from any PC or phone in my house to transfer files or bring files from this unit here. Now everybody's use case scenario for something like this will be a little bit different, but for me, I wanted to set this up as kind of a little Plex server for in the house. 
And I got that one terabyte drive. I got some videos on it. Super easy to install. You can do it through terminal or you can download the dev package from Plex's website and install it directly. Just get the ARM V8 version and you should have it up and running in no time. So if I hit over here to all, that's the first thing I went ahead and installed. And this automatically starts on launch in the background, so we don't need this interface up or anything like that, but I just wanted to bring it up to show you here. If we head to more, this is what I got set up just as a little test, and it's actually been working really well. I got some 4K stuff here, some 1080p, but mainly in the house, we stick to 1080p 60, and it works great on all of my devices. And here's a quick little demo streaming directly from the HC4 to my phone here. I actually have it set at 1080p, 12 megabits per second. And on these smaller devices, I mean, that's totally fine. It looks great. And these videos play perfectly. I also wanted to run a quick internal disk benchmark, and this is that one terabyte mechanical drive that I have installed here. Average read speed, 156 megabytes a second. Average write, 139. Average access time, 15.40 milliseconds. I'm also going to run the same test on that SSD here. And as you can see, I mean, obviously the SSD is definitely going to beat it out. And this is a cheaper SSD. This is a 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD. I think you can get these for like 28 bucks. Average read speed, 241 megabytes a second. Average write speed, 176 megabytes a second. And the access time, 0 0.18 milliseconds. So yeah, I mean, if you could afford it, and run bigger SSDs and something like this, it would definitely speed up read and write times and transfer times and things like that, but uh, it will get a bit expensive. So personally, the way I want to have this set up is basically what I have now. I have the SSD running my operating system and the other drive will be my transfer drive or my cloud drive, it'll be my media drive, whatever I want to turn this into. I definitely need to spend more time with the Odroid HC4. I do have a few ideas in mind and I will have a couple more videos coming up on this unit, but I just wanted to give you a quick look. Now, I was planning on doing a full Open Media Vault tutorial using the HC4, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below, and I can kind of gauge the audience's interest. And if you have any other ideas on what to use this unit for besides creating a NAS or media server or even retro gaming, let me know in the comments below, and I can try to whip something up, because when it comes down to it, all of these single board computers can basically do what we're doing here, but I think the main draw to the HC4 is that real PCIe SATA interface instead of running everything over USB 3.0. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Odroid HC4, I will leave a few links in the description. The base model without the OLED is $65. The one with the OLED is $75. But remember, these don't come with any storage. So if you just want to run from an SSD or a hard drive, you have to provide that or a micro SD card. It's really up to you in the end. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.